Hello and welcome back to Let's Try. We're trying Fabled Lands. Now, uh, I gotta do a little bit of a preamble here. First of all, uh, key provided by Dev. Thank you very much, Dev. I really appreciate you. Uh, I hope you don't resent me at the end of this video, <laughs> okay? Um, secondly, uh, if you're joining me, if you don't know what Fabled Lands is, if you don't know what this uh, is, what kind of series this is based on. It's basically based on a series of uh, kind of RPG-ish solo uh, choose your own adventure books and it's very faithful to that. This is going to have a lot of reading in it. I'm not going to cut out a lot of the reading because that is kind of what you're expecting here. That's the experience you're expected to have in Fabled Lands and that is uh, definitely part of the highlight. I'm going to talk a little bit about what I like about Fabled Lands. I'm also going to talk a little bit about what I don't like about Fabled Lands because this is, for me, uh, from my perspective, a bit more of a mixed bag than uh, than I usually give. But um, there's there's still a lot of positives to, to be had here. And I think that ultimately, if you're going into this with certain expectations, you will be you will leave happy and you will actually uh, get a quite a good game out of this uh, if you if you know what to expect. So let's get into it. I'm gonna start um, with Explorer mode and for people who have been playing this game you know what that means but basically it means that you're going to uh, this is a much kinder experience. We're gonna talk about classic mode a bit later um, but for now we're just gonna do classic or uh, sorry Explorer mode. Um, I'm not gonna mess too much with the uh, character creation because I, I really, uh, there's a lot here and I want to talk about a lot of it. Achievement unlocked. Death is just a flesh wound. I'm not sure, I'm not sure actually what I got from that. So, you are alone in an open boat waiting for death. How your life has changed since that day when you set out from your homeland across the unbounded ocean. You had signed on board a ship with the hope of visiting a dozen ports and seeing a thousand wonders. But calamity overtook your voyage in the past week, when pirates swooped down upon the vessel. You and a handful of shipmates managed to get the cutter down into the water and were making off, but some of the pirates leapt down the, the rail right in your midst. The fighting was hard, you remember little of it now, but when it was over, the boat was awash with blood and you were the only one left alive. Of your own ship and the pirate's craft, there was no sign. The current had carried you out of sight of any living thing. Best not to think how you've survived since then, at the mercy of the wind and sea currents, you have been swept steadily westward into the regions into regions completely unknown to you. Drinking water has been your biggest problem. You've had to rely on rain, and there has been none for days. Your body is weak, your spirit slow. Then, just as death seems ready to draw his boat alongside, you see something that kindles new hope. White clouds, birds turning high above the gray hump of land on the horizon. Steering towards the shore, you feel the cutter lurch as it enters rough water. The wind whips up plumes of spindrift and breakers pound the cliffs. The tiller is yanked out of your hands. The little boat is spun around out of control and goes plunging towards the coast. You leap clear at the last second. There is the snap of timber, the roaring crescendo, a crescendo sorry, of waves, and then silence as you go under. Striking out wildly, you try to cle swim clear. Then suddenly a wave catches you and flings you contemptuously up on the beach. It's time to begin your adventure. Battered and bedraggled, you lie grasping, gasping for breath until you hear someone walking along the shore towards you. Wary of danger, you lose no time in getting to your feet. Confronting you is an old man clad in a dirty loincloth. His eyes have a feverish bright look that is suggestive of either a mystic or madman. Well, 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 what have we here, friends? Asks the old man. He seems to be talking to someone next to him, although you are certain he is alone. Looks like a washed-up adventurer to me, he says in answer to his own question. All wet and out of luck? He carries on having a conversation, a conversation that quickly turns into a heated debate. He is qu clearly quite mad. Excuse me, uh, excuse me, you shout above the hubbub in an attempt to grab the old man's attention. He stops and stares at you. Is this the Isle of the Druids, you ask impatiently? Indeed it is, uh, says the old man. I see that you are far from... You are, you are from a far land, so it is up to me to welcome you to Harkuna. But I think you may have much to do here, as it is written in the stars that someone like you would come. You, Your destiny awaits you. Follow me, young adventurer. The old man turns smartly about and begins walking up a path towards some hills. You can just see some sort of monolithic stone structure atop one of them. 
So we have some choices. We can follow him, scour the remains of uh, remnants of washed ashore, or explore the island on your own. Uh, you're gonna want to, and uh, we'll, we'll talk about this ex very specific choice later, but I'm gonna scour the remains washed ashore. You find a small vial holding a reddish concoction. You bless your good fortune when you recognize it is a healing potion. Don't forget to click on the item. All right, now we can follow the old man. During your short trip upward, the old man regales you with tales of your destiny and fate, continuously arguing with himself as he does so. So, he is leading us to the obsidian stones. We will follow him. You reach a hill covered with a circle of large obsidian standing stones. Despite the bitter wind that blows across these hills, the stones are unweathered and seem almost newly lain. Here are the gates of the world, says the old man. Uh, the stones are laid in which... In such a way that they form three archways, each uh, carven with my mystic symbols and runes of power. Each gate will take you to a part of the world of Harkuna, though I know not where, explains the old man. Abruptly, he turns around and sets off down the hill, babbling to himself. His voice fades as he descends the hill, leaving you alone with the brooding stones and the howling wind. All right. Um, so we can step through one of the archways or we can explo explore the island further. So... You're gonna want to explore the island further, further, and I'll talk a little bit about why. You decide to explore the island further and ponder where to go next. You have a clear view from the top of the hill of the northern parts of the island, and you notice a previously unknown to you road that snakes along the cliff tops. Make a move. So um, this is our general what we're generally going to be looking at. This is our starting island. This is the island of the Isle of Druids, I suppose. Um, we can have a quick look at the map. Um, so you can see we're, we're on this little island here, and this is the rest of the world. This is Harkuna. Um, if we step through one of the archways, we're going to be either taken to Sakara, uh, Golnir. Um, I don't know if Otaku, we can actually have a look at the stones real quick. No, no, we can't actually. So <laughs> never mind. Uh, let's go to the, we're going to go to the trading post. Trading Post is a small village set up here by enterprising settlers from the mainland. Its main exports appear to be furs from the forest. The mayor, a fat, genial fellow who greets you personally, insists that one day the Trading Post will be a thriving town. There is not a lot here yet, however. A small market, a quay, the settlers' houses, and... I, I, I think that's key, actually. The settlers' houses a sh and a shrine to Lacuna the Huntress, goddess of nature. So we have some options we can... You're gonna, I don't know, if you're like me, you're gonna like, oh, what is explore? Um, nothing. Wandering around the tiny settlement is uneventful. There is nothing much for you to see. At certain towns, uh, exploration will be a thing we can do. We can do it in this town too, under cer certain cer circumstances, and I will talk about those in a second. You want to see how the divine is represented in the settlement. So we can go to the shrine to Lacuna or the temple of Nagil. Um, you're gonna get to know these different gods and what they represent, what kind of uh, concepts or symbols they represent. So we're gonna we're gonna check out the shrine to Lacuna. The shrine is set in a wooded grove. Birds twitter in the trees, and a deer darts away into the forest as you approach. A priestess is tending a low altar where food and drink has been laid out in honor of Lacuna, the goddess of the wilderness. She is the patron of hunters, trappers, woodsmen, and all of those who seek oneness with nature. Um, so we could do something like seek a blessing. That'll cost us. 25 shards. I'm going to talk about this a little bit later, but I'm not going to do this right now. Um, let's talk to the priestess. Dressed in silken robes and wearing a wreath of oak leaves, says, I have need of an adventurer like yourself. For arcane reasons involving the secret mysteries of Lacuna, I need the tusk of a boar. A were-boar, in fact. Hunt down one and bring me its tusk. In favor, I will teach you how to be a better scout. Accept the mission. Alright. Um... We'll leave the temple. We're going to want to go... Well, we don't have a house stash. When back in town view, um, you found an abandoned house which you claim is your own. Click on the chest icon to access your new personal storage. Note that any items or shards that you store here are accessible from any house. So then we can click on the house stash and we're going to want to uh, basically put all of our money in there. And I'll talk about why later. Lots of things happening later. You can't find any shards. No, no, no. I want to put all of my shards in the stash, and we'll we'll carry on as we are. Um, we can go to the market, but I'm not going to right now. So uh, we've taken a quest, right? So this is our starting island. Uh, you're gonna want to basically do a little bit of grinding here. I want to talk about a, a bit about the the gameplay loop here. Um, generally, 
this is a this is a story based game. You're gonna get a bit of story. There is also combat. Combat is it's um it's basically hex based D and D ish combat. It's it's tactical. It's got some you got some uh, attacks of opportunity. You've got some skills. Our warrior has some skills for uh, basically you know smacking people around, and uh, we're gonna do that in a, in a second right now. But let's let's look at what happens here. So this is our first dice roll. You're on the coastal road that snakes along the windswept cliff tops in the north of Isle of Druids. So we're gonna roll the dice. Now, before I do that, I want to I want to draw your attention to what 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 our options here are. What uh, we could possibly uh, encounter. Use a luck blessing, uh, which we don't have, by the way. We don't have a luck blessing. We so our options are reduced to these three. Uh, attacked by highwaymen. 6-8, you meet a militia patrol. 9-12, attacked by a werebore. So let's roll the dice. All right, attacked by highwaymen. Two brigands leap out from hiding and menace you with their swords. One is behind you, one in front, give it up. They advise money's not worth getting killed over. So um, just just to, just to be clear here, I can't ho hand over my cash because I don't have any. Um, I, I want you to, for a moment, just like maybe even pause this video and think about what you would do as the player. You know, you're playing the game. Um, maybe you could consider this game to be unforgiving, punishing. So maybe you'd think, well, running off would be better because I don't want to, uh, you know, I, I don't want to risk taking taking damage maybe or killing our character or something like that. But um, if you, maybe if you're like me and you're like, well, we're, we're a tough adventure and we can take them on. So, uh, you know, it really is, this really is a, uh, a battle of um, kind of expectations. You don't know yet what you can expect from a game like this. Is it unforgiving or is it uh, you know meant to kind of make you feel like some kind of uh, badass adventure, someone who can take on the, will, the, the, the forces of the world? I'll tell you, my personal experience is I fought them. So... They have an accomplice in hiding who shoots you with an arrow. You lose one stamina. The third brigand then leaps up to join his comrades. So we then have our two options. You've now gotten your first taste of uh, maybe what you can expect from this game is that you're not necessarily always in control. You are um, going to encounter situations in which you are going to take damage and there was, wasn't really much say in the matter. That was, that was kind of it. When I chose fight, them, I kind of assumed that meant let's start combat. So I was a little surprised at, well, you just lose some health and that's that's that. So um, what, what can you expect now? So continue the fight or surrender and beg for mercy? So now again, this is a kind of battle of expectations. Surrender and beg for mercy. I mean, that doesn't sound very adventuresome, but continue the fight. Am I going to end up in a situation where I lose more stamina? That's a question that I, like, I now I'm asking that question. But it still sounds better than surrender and beg for mercy. So even if it's, it comes down to a dice roll, I'd rather try and fight. You prepare to teach those brigands some manners. So now we're thrown into a combat. So we're going to have a look at what combat looks like. Um, before I start combat, I just want to make it clear. That's why I put my money away. It was because I knew that being attacked by highwaymen was an option. And my um, first experience of the highwayman kind of uh, combat was uh, miserable, to put it <laughs> bluntly, is instead of losing one stamina, I lost three stamina, and then I had to fight three dudes. You are not necessarily uh, like a badass. You are going to take damage. You're, you're actually, I mean, you're pretty squishy, but also um, you are quite limited in how much you can do per turn. So you have, you have some action points and you have stamina. Um, Stamina is your health. Uh, action points is how much you can do per turn. What can we do per turn? We can attack, we can defend, we can disengage, which means we get to move away from someone without taking an attack of opportunity, or we can use an item, which is an action point. Swap weapons is something we may do in the future if we have more than one weapon. Uh, and then we have our character-specific um, skills. Tactical assessment is going to uh, basically buff us to do more damage to enemies and then stunning blow is going to stun and also knock back an enemy. So, um, you know, we, ha we have some options. Um, I will just say right away, this guy's got a crossbow. So uh, if you're thinking maybe you should wait for them to come to you so that you don't waste your actions, uh, that's going to get you killed <laughs> in this in this circumstance. 
So instead, I'm going to move forward and uh, end my turn. So we're going to do, um, well, I would do a tactical ex assessment, except that costs three action points and attacking costs four action points. So we actually can't really do both in the same turn. Um, and we all, oh, well, we could, we could do a tactical assessment and also defend. So why don't we do that? And that will make mean that we can do more damage in the next turn. So we took no damage there as far as I, I could see. No, we took, we took one damage. So now, but now we can, we can start hitting them back. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. One is dead. Um, I think I still kind of want to head forward. Uh, I guess I will. So we're taking damage. We're taking quite a lot of damage. We're, we still have our buff. So we're still doing quite a lot of damage, but we're, we're, we're kind of chewing through them. We'll move forward and I think we can also hit them. So we will. We're gonna take one more damage, but we, we killed them and we're good. So that went quite well. Even if I had taken three damage, I would have made it through that combat, but I knew what to expect and I knew that um, ranged units can just kind of like pick away at you. Uh, so, you know, I had some, I had some experience, some knowledge of how this combat goes. Searching the bodies of the brigands, you find a suit of leather armor, one suit of ring mail, a couple bolts, a sword, a purse containing 37 shards. This is the most money I have ever gotten in this game. I want to, I want to talk about that a little bit. All right. So let's go ahead and look at our character sheet and we can see if maybe there's some better armor we can put on. We can put on this ring mail. Um... Is this, uh, do you think this short sword is any better? No, no bonus, no bonus. Okay, so um, that's that's that. This uh, ring mail is genuinely better. So it's gonna offer us a bit more defense, but we took some damage, right? Um, let's go back to the training post and heal up. We could take our, our healing potion and you know, like I did have my healing potion, so I wasn't necessarily dead in the water in that combat. Um, we'll go to the inn and, oh, cost nine shards to fully heal. Well, we're gonna do that because we just got a bunch of health. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do right now is I'm actually going to save the campaign. Uh, let's, whoops, try. Okay. But, you know, we didn't fight the werebore, so we're going to have to go back to the coastal road. If we want to complete that quest, we're going to have to go back, back and forward and, and just keep trying to roll a lucky, there you go. There's our, there's our nine to get, uh, to fight a werebore. A werebore in ornate armor comes thundering out of the undergrowth near the road with a raised spear. There is no chance of retreat or surrender in this battle. All right, so we're fighting our werebore. We're gonna we're gonna play things cautiously. Tell you what, this guy doesn't have ranged. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do our tactical assessment now and move forward. And he's gonna move a little bit forward. Um, honestly, I'll just end my turn because then he has to come forward. Then I'm gonna go ahead and do a stunning blow. And uh, he's gonna be stunned for a turn. And then I'm just gonna kill him. And that's that's how that combat goes. So we got we got a new uh, a new weapon, a spear. It's pretty good. Um, I, I think it's actually really good. Um, but it, it's got range too, so you can actually hit enemies from from two away. All right. So we'll we'll go back to the training post, and we're gonna hand in our quest. Um, talk to the priestess gain scouting one permanently that's a really good reward honestly like that that feels really good uh when you get that because it's like you know it's it, you, you expect when you hand in a quest you're going to get something like gold or equipment or something tangible but the fact that it is something intangible makes it way more rewarding um cool so um we could seek a blessing we have enough to do so uh, by allowing you to try again when you fail a scouting ability a check, it is good for only one reroll. You can only have one scouting blessing at any one time. Once it is used up, you can return to any branch <clears throat> of the Temple of Lacuna to buy a new one. You're going to want these. You're really going to want these. These are really important. You lose 25 shards. We, we're, we're good. Um, we can check. You can check uh, in your character sheet in blessings. We have a scouting blessing. That's going to be really important. Um, we we don't have to use that by the way. That's like on our discretion when we can use that So the trees are closely packed leaning together as if in conference whispering quietly among themselves Birds twitter in the distance and slivers of sunlight lance down through the musty gloom 
As you proceed along a forest track, you think you hear a rustling in the bushes. Later, you spot a shadowy figure darting through the trees. Or was it your imagination? An animal s snuffling sound right behind you makes you spin around, but there is nothing there. Aww. Oh. So we have a 72% chance of success because our scouting is uh, has been improved. So we, we succeeded in our scouting role. You struggle deeper into the forest until you come to a thick wall of impenetrable thorn bushes. Circling it, you find there is a break in the, le the hedge, but it is filled by a large tree. To your surprise, a face forms in the trunk and speaks in a woody voice. None can pass. Be gone, human. Um, try to persuade it to let you pass. You explain what a tree lover you are, that your heart has always been at home in forests. You portray yourself as the greenest adventurer ever. We have a 58% chance of success here, so not not necessarily great, but better than half. And we succeeded. I'm getting very lucky rolls here. I just want to like really underline that. Well, I suppose I could let one such as you through, says the tree thoughtfully. Then it uproots itself with a great tearing sound and shuffles out of the way. There you go, says the tree. You may pass. You walk through the thorn bush gate. Beyond, you find several huge oak trees whose branches are so big that they are able to support the homes of many people. So we get to visit the city of trees. Welcome to the city of trees, says a passing woman dressed in the garb of a druid. The city has been built amid the branches of s several mighty oaks. Ladders run up and down the trees to house uh, to houses that perch like nests in the branches. You are not allowed in into any houses, but the druids allow you to barter at the market. So we're going to barter at the market. Now, I, I want to talk a little bit about this. Um, we can, uh, can we, can we sell our stuff? We can actually sell our stuff. So we'll go ahead and do that. We'll sell all our stuff. Um, so we have, even, even before we get our gold from our house, we have 173 gold, which is really nice. Um, so we could buy like an, an axe weapon, which is probably, oh, that's our spear. That's the spear. Action points three, damage one to three. Uh, eh, bleh. We could buy a short bow that would allow us to like do some range damage, which would be kind of nice. Sling bullets. So we could buy a great axe. That would be that would be really cool. But it only does damage two to four. Combat plus one. Action points cost three. Or two to seven great sword. But it has action points cost four. So some of these weapons have different action points points costs. Um, you can see here, there's, you know, this, this market is pretty extensive. Not every market has, um, like, rare items like these. So this one is, is actually really good. We could maybe later learn Animal Companion, although it's 1400 Uh, just to be clear, you can, so, you, like, money, uh, you can buy a house in this game. It costs about, well, it depends on the city, of course, but it costs, like, 100 to 200 So when an Animal Companion book costs 1440 Go, like gold shards um that uh that's like yeah you're putting a down payment on a mansion there buddy um so we'll we'll leave and we'll check out the other location the druid's le uh, leader did it say leader there you are brought before the druid's leader the oak druid a bearded fellow with earth and leaves all tangled up in his hair he asks you to perform a service for them take this oak staff to the willow druid in the forest of laroon the sacred grove where he lives will be hard to find, but I'm sure you can do it. The Willow Druid will give you something to bring back to me. When you return with it, I will make your techniques of tracking and your wilderness lore better. All right, we'll accept that. You accept the, t the, hand, the task at hand. You remind yourself to take the Oak Staff on your way out. We take the Oak Staff. All right. So the Forest of Laroon is in Sokara. So we're, we're scuppered here. This is officially the end of this island like there's not much else for us to do so we can go back to the trading uh trading pose there is one more quest we can do here we can go to the temple of N nagil nagil is the lord of the lands of the dead and his temple in the trading post is covered in uh freezes i I've, I've never encountered that word and gargoyles of ornate design depicting the souls of the dead on their journey to the underworld inside it is cool and dark hung with black velvet drapes a scroll tacked to the wall reads, Wanted, person of unusual resourcefulness. See Temple's Warden. Okay, so uh, let's visit the Warden. The Warden is in charge of security. We have had an unfortunate um, accident, he says worriedly. In the crypt below the temple, we sometimes experiment with the corpses of the dead. You know, the occasional zombie. Part of the rituals in honor of the particular aspect of Nagil we revere here. 
It seems a ghoul has escaped from these pits and is terrorizing the, the villagers at night. We'd rather someone like you sorted the problem out before the militia go, got to hear of it. Destroy it and bring me the ghoul's head. Accept the mission. Search for it at night, says the warden as you leave. Okay, so um, that means we go to exploration and we can set out at night. We have a 40% odds of success here. Um, failed magic roll. That makes sense because we are not very good at a magic roll. But we have one more chance here. Um, make a scouting roll. Now, we only still have a 40% chance of success here. So let's go ahead and roll that. We failed it, but we can use a blessing. So let's go ahead and use our blessing. So we get one more chance here. Success. Successful scouting roll. A trail of gruesome murders and tales of terror leads you to an old cemetery in a near deserted part of the old quarter. It is nearly morning, sorry, it is early morning, a few hours before dawn, so you haven't had, uh, haven't much time before the ghouls go into hiding. At the gates of the cemetery, you find a small girl hunched over, sobbing. When she sees you, she backs away, terrified. So we have a 60% chance. This is uh, a charisma roll. We failed. The little girl runs off before you can talk to her, you're th you thread your way through the pitted tombstones and brooding crypts of the cemetery. Under a pale moon that bathes the graveyard in a sickly, pallid light, suddenly a foul stench fills your nostrils and a figure rises up out of the shadows. Yellow eyes glow with feral bloodlust and the creature sinks its black teeth into your arm before you can react. You lose four stamina and you've been infected. You now have a disease, ghoul bite. Until you find a cure, you have no point. You have one point subtracted from your sanctity, combat, and charisma abilities. No ability can drop below one. The ghoul, a rotting walking corpse, lunges for you again. Invoke the power of the gods. Well, that's interesting. Well, that would, uh, I believe that would mean making a sanctity roll. So we'll, we can try that. Yeah, that exactly right makes a, makes a sanctity road, roll. And we have a minus on that now because we have a uh, disease. Uh, to banish this foul, blasphemous travesty of life, the ghoul shrinks back for a moment, snarling. We failed. I, I lose two more stamina. You have no choice but to fight it. So let's fight it. So there's our ghoul. They have 15 stamina. We now have nine. We do have a potion, so, you know, not all is lost. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and make a tactical assessment. Now you might uh, notice, I don't know if you have yet, uh, but there are different tiles on the field that uh, definitely have an effect on the battlefield. This heavy mud is going to take more time to move through than this one extra action point, and as is this rubble. So we actually are in a huge disadvantage because there's no easy way to get to the ghoul, uh, but that's okay because we're going to want to hold up for a moment and uh, yeah, just, just kind of let him come to us although he is very slow isn't that 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 they, they are very very slow oh okay not that slow so why don't we go ahead and move on here and we'll do a defense just in case they have enough yep to attack us um so let's go ahead and smack them uh we did five damage that's not bad they did five no they didn't do five what did they do I think they did none. No, they did something. It's this this log is like really not great to look at, to be honest. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and we'll do a stunning blow, and then um, we need to do a tactical assessment. So we can do that because we have a free turn. Oh no, we don't have a free turn. They were I thought they were stunned, but they got to attack us anyway. But it's fine. They they missed. All right, and we can hit, we can kill them now. All right, victory. We got the ghoul's head. Its jaws still twitch unnervingly from time to time. Since you are already suffering from ghoul bite, there are no further effects. In any case, you hack off the hideous head and leave. All right, we'll go back to the temple. Temple Nagil, visit the warden. Quest completed, you did it, exclaims the warden happily, taking the ghoul's head and placing it in a jar. It is time for a reward. You can choose only one of these three rewards. 500 shards or an amber wand plus one magic. I think I'll take the shards. Uh, I'm not really gonna go for... <laughs> Why is a free resurrection deal not on the table? Yo, I, I have to ask the question. Why is a free resurrection... You said three rewards and then one of them is just like not available. But what? whatever, I'm gonna take the 500 shards. That's almost a resurrection deal in itself. 
Looks you over. I'm afraid we have no no one skilled enough to cure you. However, I believe the Temple of Maka in Yellowport might be able to help. And the holy waters at Blessed Springs are known to be efficacious in this kind of case. This is actually very useful information. Holy waters at Blessed Springs. Holy waters at Blessed Springs. I didn't know this, by the way. And I'm going to talk about why. Um, so we're going to go, uh, just, just for a moment, I'm going to go ahead and uh, rest until fully healed. And then I'm going to go back to my house dash and we're going to dump the rest of our money there. And we have 862 shards. Now, let me talk for a moment. I'm going to talk for a good five minutes here about expectations when it comes to fabled lands. So you've just seen a pretty good snapshot of the kind of experience you can expect from fabled lands. Now I will say, ultimately, it is a very positive impression of fabled lands. You're gonna encounter some really, really well written uh, writings. It, uh, I know that's redundant, right? You're gonna have some really good writing. You're gonna have some really good world building. We've gotten a picture of some gods, some characters, uh, different cities, different cultures, talking trees, werebores, highwaymen. Uh, this is a world rife with uh, a lot of world building, a lot of story building, and the writing in this game is excellent. It's really, really good. Um, I love the writing in this game. And also, this game is going to basically smack you with a lot of interesting opportunities. You can buy a house, like immediately I got a house, I've gotten a, gotten a stash, I've gotten some equipment. I haven't quite leveled up. I actually love the fact that um, leveling up in this game isn't simple. It's not, uh, it's not easy, like it takes quite a long time to level up and that makes it super rewarding. Um, we've completed almost three quests now, like we got a third one. I would say honestly just getting the quest from the forest is a trial in itself. And uh, why is that? Well, so what is the negative uh, impressions of this scenario? Because you can have exactly the same uh, circumstance here and kind of just lose, like just lose. Um, so, so what does that look like? Well, for instance, if I get the quest to take to to fight the werebore, um, that requires me to go to the coastal road. If you like, as you saw, the coastal road uh, encounters are like basically one of three. You can either encounter a militia group, uh, highwaymen, or a werebore. If you don't get the werebore, you can't fight the werebore. If you can't fight the werebore, you can't complete the quest. So what are the, the other two options? Well, the militiamen um, is a non-encounter. It's basically a non-event. You encounter some militia and spoilers, they tell you, hey, you can go and invest in the merchant's guild or whatever. And so that's a little bit of information and that's nice and all, but it doesn't really get you closer to anything uh, helpful, super helpful, right? The other encounter is the highwaymen. And we kind of, I went through the highwaymen step by step. Now, I've chosen Explorer's Mode for this playthrough, and I did that deliberately because I want to give you a positive, ultimately I want to give you a positive impression of this game. And I think that if you're going to get this game because you want an RPG, choose your own adventure with some really good writing, then you just 100% should pick Explorer's Mode. I really, really don't know why Classic Mode is even really an option until maybe you've played the game a little bit because it gives you this impression that this is something you're gonna wanna, th this is something you can kind of overcome. It's a game with, a, you know, skill. I would say this is a game with about 30% uh, of like wits of you using knowledge in some sense, uh, of you trying to play correctly. And then there is just this unavoidable elephant, lucky elephant in the room where you can just get unlucky and that doesn't feel good. There's not really much in the game to uh, sort of safety net catch you when something like that happens. So for instance, if you go and fight the werebore, you try and fight the werebore and you just get highwaymen, and then you're like, well, I wanna fight the highwaymen, and then you just lose stamina, then you're at a disadvantage. In this situation, I was able to fight them off. I was able to fight them off because I knew that the crossbowmen uh, was going to hit me from afar, and so I basically closed the gap. I also was able to fight the, the highwaymen because I knew that you want to avoid the old man at the very start of this and take that 
that get that healing potion. So I had the confidence of knowing I had that small safety net. If I didn't know those things, and I was playing this in classic mode, um, as I did when I first started playing this game, then a couple of things are gonna happen. First of all, I'm going to lose that combat. The cards are stacked, stacked against me, right? I don't have the healing potion because I follow the old man. Uh, I'm not fighting the werebore, I'm fighting the, the highwayman, and I've chosen to fight them, so I have the disadvantage of that, of that first knock, and in my case, it was three stamina, not one. And then uh, I'm just gonna lose that combat. So what happens when I lose that combat? Well, I'll tell you, you don't actually die. If you die in classic mode, you have to start over unless you've saved the game. I've gotten into the habit of saving the game <laughs> um, because I was playing in classic mode. And then you just have, you have one stamina and they rob you and you have no shards. So what happens when you have no shards? You, you just lose because you can't recover your health. Like you could try and find that healing potion if you know that it's there, but I actually, I'm not even sure if it's available to you if you pass that up. I, I really should check to see if that's, a, if that's the case. I guess before seeing that, uh, make a move. I'm not seeing if that coast is like available. Um, but like, yeah, that's that's just like a, a miserable, miserable uh, kind of like stacked deck where you end up in the situation where you can't really do anything. Also, the city of trees. I want to talk about that. Uh, what happens when you fail the the the, the roll against the tree? Well, um, they just they just don't let you. They just don't let you visit the city of trees. But uh, you know what you can do is you can go away and then come back and try again, right? Which means you have to again f succeed a scouting role to find the entrance to the city of trees, and then try and succeed a charisma role against the tree. You can possibly fight the tree. I'll be honest, I haven't tried to do that because. You know, a lot of the time I've been at like one health with no shards. In classic mode, you don't start with 200 shards. You start with 16. And I, I wanted to give show you that uh, some of the marketplaces in this game, like how much does it cost to build a house or sorry, buy a house. It's like 200, right? Uh, how much does it cost to get a blessing? 25 shards. How much does it cost to buy literally any weapon? you know, 40 to 50 to, to 60, you can buy some bolts. So when you're in classic mode, you basically cannot buy anything and you also can't buy a blessing and you also can't really, like you can get it. I don't even know if the house is available to you. So you can't even really store your shards, but then you go and encounter the highwayman trying to find the werebore and you get robbed and you're at one health and, and it's just a miserable experience. Um, but that miserable experience is just, like basically getting really unlucky. And in my case, it's not even luck in the game. It's just not knowing that classic mode is not for you. This is not, uh, since this is a game with uh, just a sort of fundamental amount of luck in it, um, you're not gonna really wanna play that kind of experience with such harsh punishment, especially like, you know, th there's no auto saving. So if you, if you like lose and you just die, you're like, oh, I, I guess I'm building a new character. Like the game just says start a new game. So um, I, I, want to, I wanted to talk about these things because I think that uh, they're, they're, it's important to know your expectations going into this um, can be met in a couple of ways. If you're expecting uh, an RPG-ish game uh, with different choices, I think ultimately you might be disappointed because um, it's a lot of choices are just kind of wrong and you don't necessarily know why. You don't understand why those choices were wrong because there's not really much to indicate that. The game tells you there is something to indicate that, but I think that for some things you're just gonna want to have already played the game and gotten that information, known that the potion is there, known that you you can get you know a blessing, known knowing all of those things, that, that information is so important. Um, and, and finding out is really just like trial and error sometimes. Um, so you can, you can expect, uh, you can expect a couple of different circumstances in this game. So 
but let, let me, you know, having talked a little bit about my negative impressions about the game, I really do want to focus on the positive. The positive in this game is that <clears throat> it has so much to offer you in terms of a really interesting world to explore. And if you do know a little bit about it, you will ultimately have a really positive experience with this because then you, you have at least a little bit of a, a helping hand. Um, ha starting with 200 gold is going to allow you to actually like buy a house, for instance. Also, I didn't know that you had to buy this house in order to, or order to access it. I thought you you got it. But yeah, so you, 100 charts to buy a house. You can't buy a, a house in classic mode, so you can't store your gold. So you're going to just lose your money. Um, you could even like possibly do something like buy a ship, right? Like a, a, a ship costs 250 gold. I would, I want to, I really want to do that. Like the, just the option of being able to do that is really cool. Get a crew. Yeah. Do some trading. Like the, you can do really cool stuff like invest in the market with knowledge that you've gained by like encountering different stories. That stuff is really cool. And I really want to experience that. And if there's something I can really, uh, I really want to underline in this game is it is a world of possibilities that I really want to explore but I do I just kind of can find uh, these situations where I, I feel like oops and then and then uh, you know I just I just died right uh, so here's a great um, encounter um, I'm actually not gonna do it but I will spoil what happens so you are trekking across the aptly named Crestmoor. A great rolling expanse of bla blasted heath stretches before you. Gray clouds hang over a mournful, dirty water colored plain, studded with rocky outcrops and low hills. A raven fluttered to the ground nearby, eyeing you cur curiously. His brother cawed loudly into the echoing sky. Dusk falls, and in the dim twilight, a herd of horses come streaking out of the night, straight at you. As they near, it seems to you that they, their hooves are not touching the ground, and from their manes trail wispy clouds of sparks like tiny stars. So I have the option of mounting one of them and then like, like trying to stay on them. I'm going to get out of their way. Horses push past, rush past you. They seem to gallop through the air, whinnying and neighing, bellowing at the night twilight sky. Soon they disappear from your sight. You make camp and the next day continue on your journey. So why did I do that? I want to talk a little bit about it. Um, those were actually fae. They, they were basically fairies and goblins. Uh, fairies and goblins are a huge thing in this game and they are like the traditional folklore fairies and goblins, which means they're horrible pranksters and tricksters and they'll like turn your arm into a frog and stuff like that. Um, and generally, uh, when you're fighting fantasy creatures in this game or even like encountering them, you're gonna wanna do a sanctity roll. And in that case, we would actually want to do a sanctity roll. But uh, as you understand, as you know, uh, my, my uh, sanctity is not doing so good, you know? Um, we're basically at this like cliff face and at the cliff face, there's a couple of options here. We can examine the runes, we can go down the beach, or continue on the road. There's a quest to uh, try and retrieve something from this like underwater city, which is, you know, that's really cool. Um, how do we get down to the underwater city? Well, I can tell you there's one, one way, uh, is we can examine the runes. This is a magic roll. So we'll roll and we'll fail. And uh, so, you know, that option is not available to us. If you succeed that roll, which I did manage to do once you get to cast a spell that grows gills and then you get to go down and, and fight some some you know nasties and underwater and try and find this uh you know underwater city so instead we'll uh go to the beach and we will see some merfolk so merfolk is are basically uh, also fey like in this game and they are going to try and lull us into a, a false sense of security we're going to make a sanctity roll which is not great because uh, you know our sanctity is not doing well but we succeeded so we succeeded the sanct sanctity roll how can I come out to you? I would drown in the sea. Is that what you plan? You ask angrily. Don't know, sighs one of them. The kiss of the merfolk gives the power to breathe water to one of your kind for a short time. Okay, so yeah, that sounds great, right? We need that if we want to go check out the underwater city. So be kissed by the merfolk. Uh, no, wait, that's, they're not cool with that. They want you to make a charisma roll. Okay, so we'll use it. We'll do a charisma roll. And hey, we succeeded at the charisma roll. 
You tell a story of tragic love between a merman and a human princess. The merfolk are moved to, to shed briny tears, and one of them plants a lang uh, languorous kiss on your lips. You find that you can indeed breathe underwater now. The merfolk lead you into the depths where they swim playfully around you. Suddenly, two hideous forms loom out of the murk. They are like giant squids, but carry spears in one of their many tentacles and wear rudimentary armor. Okay, so this is what I encountered when I succeeded at the spell. Vile looking creature shoots toward you with a terrifying predatory. So we're gonna do this combat and then I'm gonna close with some, some thoughts. This is one of the longer videos I've done lately, but I think it's important because there's a lot in this game and I have very conflicting sort of um, uh, ambivalence about this game. On one side, I really like it. And on another, I think that there's maybe one or two things that hold it back. And I, I want to close with those two thoughts um, because I think ultimately you should play this game, but you should also know those two things. So um, we're gonna go ahead and do our tactical assessment and then uh, I'll move forward one. So these guys aren't too bad. They they give you the impression that they're gonna be pretty tough, but they're, they're actually not too bad. We'll move forward one and defend. So now we can, we'll do a stunning blow. So this guy can attack of opportunity us if we move. So we're not gonna do that. Instead, we're just gonna hold hold still and continue to wear this guy down. You definitely wanna focus on one if you can. We still have that healing potion, so it's all good if we take a few hits. We should be able to kill this guy now. Oh, no, actually, no. Okay, so why don't we go ahead and use that healing potion? Actually, is this a potion of nature? Oh, plus one scouting. So we'll, we'll kill that guy. Uh, we're still not in a great circumstance here. That guy's got 10 stamina. So I think I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and use our tactical assessment and uh, defend, so I can do more damage. Only three damage, huh? We might actually die here. Let's stunning blow them. Oh! All right, we died. Despite having a potion and despite uh, doing, I thought pretty well on some of the tactics, we did die. An unfortunate end to your adventures. However, you, since you have arranged a resurrection deal, you do not fear death as you know you will be magically restored to life. Excuse me, I already had a resurrection deal. Really? They give you a free resurrection deal? Ah, oh, that's interesting. I feel like I'm maybe beating this drum a little bit too hard, but I really do want to like talk about one last experience I had, which was uh, a fort to explore with three doors. And uh, I mean, the context of the doors doesn't really mean much, right? Because you don't really have any context, you know, a ram's head or a, a bolt of lightning or something. You're like, okay, well, you know, whatever. I'll, I'll pick the, the ram. And then I just died. So um, you can find yourself in circumstances like that. And I think that that, uh, that just doesn't necessarily make for a very interesting or compelling personal story. Uh, if you're playing well and you know what you're doing, then you can have many safety nets in place to make sure that uh, you're doing well. I would say that um, in order to really set that up properly, I would just not recommend playing on classic mode. I just don't think that classic mode is very reasonable. I, I think that, that that is my first big take here like if you want to play this game straight up just don't play on classic mode you have so little starting gold that you can't buy anything including a resurrection deal in my personal opinion they should just start with more starting gold i feel like classic mode you should start with 100 gold i think 16 is just kind of absurd but my second takeaway i think that this game has uh really good stories to tell when you're succeeding I think that the stories that it has to tell when you're losing are not as interesting. I compare this to games like, um, you know, in my head, Sunless Seas or Sunless Skies, which kind of have fallbacks if you don't roll well. They tell you something interesting or they, they give you something to think about when you fail. There's still a story to be told. I also think about games like War Tales in which 
Um, failure is actually an opportunity to tell an interesting story. It doesn't necessarily mean that you get the golden fleece or you get the cool treasure. Like, yeah, obviously those things feel good, but I still think that death or failure or loss can be interesting. This was Fabled Lands. Uh, if you enjoyed this fairly long let's try, I really appreciate it. Please uh, consider hitting that like button because it does actually help a lot. And if you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.